Today, we are honored to be speaking with Juliet Jeffers, an award-winning actress with roots right here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Juliet is not only an actress, but also a writer, director, producer, and educator. She has worked on stage and screen for over 20 years, starring in 19 films. 34 TV shows and over 60 commercials. To learn all about her career, join us in welcoming Juliet to GMSKN. Welcome, Juliet. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You're most welcome. You recently played Dr. Sassner in the Netflix film Aftermath. Yes. How did you, in the same way that Meryl Streep said, find yourself in that role? Ah, well, I played a therapist. So Dr. Sasner is a therapist. Mm -hmm. And so generally speaking, therapists are very patient and empathetic. And so I found I t tend to be a patient person, except, except for when I'm driving. Um, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but, um, I understand. <laughs> right, right. New, I come, you know, New York driver, you know, so, um, but I tend to be a patient person and I'm always, you know, listening to my friends and family and giving them support. And so I channeled that part of me for the role. And, um, and it was a great experience being on that film. Nice. I, I like the way you use the word channel. Now, you also mm -hmm. mentioned previous to me that that's not your most recent acting role. You said you also did a role on Law and Order. Tell us a bit about that one as well. So, yeah. So I recently appeared on Law and Order Organized Crime. So, you know, they have uh, a bunch of shows in that franchise, but this one was Organized Crime. And... Um, and so I, I recently did, I went to New York to shoot that because I'm based in Los Angeles now. I kind of go back and forth, but mostly based in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. And, um, and before that, I did an episode of 911 Lone Star, and that airs on Fox. So, so, so both mm. of those came out like within two weeks of, of, the, of the other. I think it was around March when it came out. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So do you have do you have a thing for investigative roles? You know what? That's what it looks like right now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I feel like it's interesting because I there's no one type of character that I tend to be cast as, you know. Okay. I, I mm -hmm. play um the victim, you know. Actually it's interesting because I did a um I did an Instagram post where I showed a picture of myself in different roles, but they were all like in the hospital. So oh. I did an episode of ER, of Grey's Anatomy, and um, uh, Chicago Med, where I'm all in a hospital bed. <laughs> you oh know my! What I mean? <laughs> so I like, is there? Is there? So that's a patient role, yes. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. You know, but but a lot of but mm -hmm. other than that, most of my characters have had a, there's been a wide range of characters that I've played. Right. In doing our research, we, we found that you have starred in over 19 films. Which one? Can you pick one that stands out the most for you? Yes. The one that stands out the most is um, a film called Noise in the Middle. And what was so special about this film is, well, there were a lot of special things, but one was that I didn't have to audition for the role. It was an offer. And oh. this was a director who I did a commercial with several years prior to that. And it was a time when I wasn't even auditioning for roles because I had just uh, had surgery on my ankle. So oh. I wasn't auditioning at all. And my agent called and he said, there's this offer for you for a film. And I was like, well, I have a, I had a boot on my, on my leg, you know? And, um, and I was like, I can barely walk. I'm like, no, I don't think I can do it. And then I thought about it. I looked up the director and I thought about it. I was like, wait a minute. 
<laughs> let me let me at least find out who this character is because maybe this character is sitting behind a desk all day long you know what i mean yes and so mm -hmm. and so i you know i read the script and i said yes this is doable and i said well just let them know that i'm in a boot and the director said we will work around it and so it already started with as you know with such a special um feeling and then the next best thing and i know you guys would love this is that my character is Caribbean Yay! and it's actually, <laughs> yes. And so, so I like to do that whenever I can, I like to represent. So if there is a role um, that I feel like, you know, can be Caribbean, sometimes I'll ask, you know, um, if I can make her Caribbean. And, um, but this particular one, that's what the, 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 the director wanted. And, nice. um, and I played a therapist uh, it's interesting. There's another therapist there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <they're laughs> and you know, and both of those, uh, so aftermath and noise in the middle are both horror films. Oh. And, uh, and so yes, you should check it out. That, um, noise in the middle is on Amazon prime. So okay. it's, you can still see it. And, and I commend you on, on, putting your Caribbean-ness <laughs> into the <laughs> fore. Thank you so much. And you, all, you have also written or performed five, just a minute, five solo shows. Tell solo us a bit shows. about. Yes. Right. So solo show well, is simply mm -hmm. like, right, like a one woman show, right? right. Mm -hmm. And so the very first one I did, it's called Batman and Robin in the Boogie Down. Mm -hmm. And that is based on my brother and I growing up in the Bronx. And um, he unfortunately passed away back in oh, 96. My condolences. So, thank you. Thank you. So it's a tribute to him. And it's, uh, it's, I performed it the first time in 2003. And the most recent time I did it was just last year in November. So it's one of those, it's a story that is timeless. And mm -hmm. I, I can be performing that uh, until I'm 70 years old. You know what I mean? Because it just, it's like I said, it's timeless and people can relate to it. Um, and I've got a lot of, gotten a lot of awards for it and nominations for it. And it's just, it's, it's really special to me because of course it's about my brother and I, and I portray yes. about uh, 20 different characters. Mm -hmm. My, I portray my father who's from Nevis. So, so I, growing up, I always liked to, I guess I call myself a sponge, right? And so I, I like to pick up different accents. I look at people and observe them and and I can do their mannerisms and all of that. And so I've always had a thing for doing different characters. And, um, and so I played my grandmother, my father, my mother, uh, my Dominican uncle, and, uh, you know, different accents and so on. So I, um, that's, I, I love doing that. And, and, and it really, you know, my father, who passed away in 2020 at 93 years old. Oh, my um, condolences, but he had uh, a, a full life. He, <laughs> he did. He did. And, you know, he was creative as well. Okay. Yeah, that's where I had my, yes. I, I mean, he was, got the uh, jeans. He, I got the jeans. <laughs> he, he liked to act. He sang, he played music, played the guitar and the piano. And so very, very creative. And, um, and so he was probably my biggest supporter of that play that I did because I did a run of it in New York and uh -huh. he would, he, I don't know, he came so many times, but he also brought people. He was always bringing people, telling people about, um, the show and, uh, uh he was proud of you. He was proud. <laughs> he was proud. <laughs> yes. And I, you know, I think about, um, my father and, and, and Nevis and I, I've always wanted to, to do a film in Nevis, you know, <gasps> nice. I always wanted yes. to, I wanted to, I've always wanted to put Nevis on the, on the map. Right. Yes. And, yes. and just, and just, you know, create awareness of a uh, beautiful Island of Nevis and St. Kitts as well. But, yes. um, 
but because my father was so creative, I, I want to pay homage to him, mm-hmm. you know? And so, so I, as I have some things in mind, I will keep you posted on that. Yes. And please, we can do with a really nice exclusive <laughs> right here on Good Morning Skin. So let us know when you're ready. You're quite welcome mm-hmm. to come back. So can we then rest assured that you're, performing arts began or were nurtured by maybe looking at your dad, that kind of thing. How did you become interested in the performing arts? I, I think, yes, definitely. He had, he, he performed um, a play that he wrote called the, the um, uh, uh, what was it called? Oh, this is when I was younger, um, The Prodigal Son. Ah. And, um, and so I remember seeing him, I mean, as a little kid on stage and that was very inspirational. And, and then of course I went to the high school performing arts in, in New York, which is based on the, the movie fame, well, ah, which the movie yes. fame is based on. Yeah. Yes. And so, um, and so as a little kid, I always knew that I wanted to pursue it. And then I went to college so I could have something to fall back on. So I studied languages, but still, as soon as I graduated, I just went to right into uh, pursuing a career in acting because it's what I've always wanted to do. Very nice. So this leads us on to the next question. In addition to your love for the craft, what's the one thing that you think um, you would like to achieve? What's your overarch- overarching goal in doing your performances? Well, my, my artist mission statement is to heal myself and others using my creative endeavors. And so, uh, sometimes when, when I book a role, I don't necessarily have control over the, you know, what the role is and and all of that. But specifically when I'm creating my solo shows because I'm creating, it's coming from me when I'm creating my solo shows, yes. when I write, and like I said, I'm writing a couple of films right now. Um, and so when I write it, that is my overall mission that, you know, that I can, for my creative endeavors that I can heal others and, you I know, love and healing, right. Healing comes in so many forms. So yes. if you I laugh, love it, right. Mm-hmm. If I, if I do mm-hmm. comedy, you know what I mean? If I do a comedy, then, then you are, laughter is healing. Yes. Right? We're and pressed so... for time. Sorry to okay. cut you off. We're pressed for time in one sentence. You are the curator of Black Voices Solar Theater Festival. How did that get started? And just let us know broadly, so, very quickly. Yes. Um, Brian Rasmussen, who runs the White Fire Theater in Los Angeles, he um, he's the one that came to me with this idea. And this was after um, George Floyd, you know, during the pandemic um, oh. when that happened. Uh, and he uh, and so he was inspired to to create this festival. And he came to me and he asked me if I would be open to curating it and i didn't have to think about it at all i said yes nice. absolutely yes, yes. Mm-hmm. and so it was a lovely opportunity to give black artists a chance to to perform and to tell their stories 